Welcome to Facebook. My name is Dr. George Aguiar. I'm a sports medicine and total joint surgeon at Ortho Virginia. I'm here today to present to you the Mako Surgical Robot. I pre perform uh, partial knee replacements and total knee replacements with this robot at this facility here at our Herndon Operatory where we are live. Thank you for joining us today. A little bit about uh, Ortho Virginia. I've been with Ortho Virginia for 20 years, and we are the largest orthopedic multi specialty uh, group in the entire state. We have offices throughout Northern Virginia. We also have offices down in Lynchburg and in Richmond and in the beach area in the east of Virginia. Um, we have a new office at Stone Springs, and that just recently opened uh, last month, so we're very excited about that. Uh, if you wish to know a little bit more about Ortho Virginia, you can always uh, reach us at our orthovirginia.com website, where you can look for surgeons, specialties, uh, and ha if you have any other questions about our facilities, uh, it is a, it's a great website. Uh, before we get started, uh, you know, with regard to the Mako robot, today's presentation is about how I use the robot for partial knee replacements and for uh, total knee replacements to treat osteoarthritis. I think uh, if there's friends or families that you have that you know are interested in this topic, please feel free to uh, share, push the share link button so that you can share this. Um, if some of your family members are interested in having their knee replaced partially or full or have questions about robotic surgery uh, we are more than happy to uh, answer their questions today after a brief presentation now let's get started and start talking a little bit about this Mako robot that I have been using now for uh, over nine years this robot allows us to treat uh, end-stage arthritis and uh, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about arthritis and treatment options and how I use the Mako robot to help me uh, alleviate pain and improve patient function. Uh, with regard to uh, arthritis, the most common type of arthritis, as, as you may know, is osteoarthritis, which is the wear and tear of your joints. But there's other types of arthritis, like rheumatoid arthritis, which is another common one. Patients who have had prior sport injuries, have had numerous surgeries in the past, experience a significant amount of pain uh, because their joints are damaged. The ends of the joint, uh, which is made up of cartilage, gets worn out and eventually most patients uh, will have debilitating pain at some point requiring some other type of intervention. It's important to note that many patients are treated conservatively. A lot of our patients are treated very well conservatively for a, a very long time, maintaining activity level, function, and that can be done with anti-inflammatories, uh, injections, many types of injections, cortisone, lubricants, uh, biologics, which include stem cells, PRP. These are all great options for depending on the severity of your arthritis. Understand that we grade your arthritis from mild, moderate to severe. The Mako robot is designed to treat patients who have moderate to severe arthritis. Right behind me, we have an example on these x-rays of one of my patients earlier this year, who you can see, hopefully you can see from, from, uh, from back there, the bone-on-bone uh, the -bone deformity. This patient had a severe uh, knock knee deformity and was, in, was crippled with debilitating pain for a prolonged period of time. Despite conservative treatment, um, uh, this patient was sent to me because everything had failed and I thought she was a great candidate for this robot. Let's talk about the Mako robot. What is the Mako robot? It's in a robotic arm that assists the surgeon in treating patients to make sure that we are precise in our technique to accomplish a successful knee replacement. I call it the ultra, ultimate assistant. It helps pre-surgery and intraoperatively to guide the surgeon in making sure that the technique is precise, efficient, with decreased blood loss, uh, decreased operative time in my hands, uh, faster recovery. So how does it work? If you have failed conservative treatment, I typically 
for the Mako robot request a specialty CAT scan. That is done in a few area facilities, and this CAT scan essentially provides us with a 3D model of your knee. This scan is done from the hip down to the ankle, and we know the anatomy of your leg, your unique anatomy, and it will show us on these screens a 3D virtual model of your knee. In the operating room, we will uh, combine the information from that CAT scan with real-time information regarding your specific knee. Once we marry that information, we have truly a virtual knee. When I move your knee in the operating room, it moves on the screen. <clears throat> Prior to surgery, we've determined whether you are a candidate for a partial replacement or a full replacement. These models behind me reveal a partial knee replacement for the inner aspect of the knee, or a partial replacement of your kneecap, or a full replacement. Understand that the ends of the bones have been damaged, they're causing severe pain, and so we are resurfacing, basically changing the ends of the bones from damaged cartilage, damaged bone, to metal on a specialty plastic and metal for, for a full or a partial. With the virtual knee created in the operating room, prior to surgery, and intraoperatively, we are making adjustments. We're finding the correct size, the correct orientation, 360 degrees. We know how the implant should move and how it should track and how it's balanced prior to, to making any of the surgical cuts. And so we make sure that we are able to achieve what we call full extension, which is where the knee is fully straight and that we are able to achieve the bend and the motion that we are looking for prior to making any cuts. So we're getting a significant amount of information by this Mako robot, this amazing assistant that is combining three technologies. Technology number one I mentioned is the 3D technology, virtual knee. Technology number two, it's a haptic technology. I guide the robotic arm. I'm actually doing the surgery. The robotic arm I'm guiding and it's only removing the bone that has been predetermined that needs to be removed on the screen. It will not remove less, it will not remove more. It also has haptic technology where it stops so that it does not damage any of your soft tissue. Long gone are the days where we do all these significant soft tissue releases that causes a lot of pain and a lot of discomfort post-surgery. With this technology, we are able to strategically remove the bone and the angle orientation 360 degrees to get these implants to fit like a glove. With that, the procedure takes typically about 50 to 60 minutes to complete. Uh, patients are walking immediately. It's a team effort. We have a technician in the operating room helping, guide, uh, helping us with the analytics all the information that's up here. We have uh, an anesthesia team that uh, provides typically a spinal anesthetic, so you're awake. You're allowed to walk full weight right after this procedure, and uh, you typically can go home the same day. So um, I'm excited about this. This technology is proven. It's been around for a while. I've been using this robot for about nine years. The last 350 to 400 of these replacements I have done robotically with great success. As far as uh, some tips that I wanted to uh, leave you with, uh, understand tip number one is uh, exhaust conservative treatment. A lot of patients do not need to rush to getting their knee re replaced fully or partially. It's important that you exhaust conservative treatment. Many patients can you know, wait a few years prior to proceeding with this type of uh, replacement. With regard to tip number two, uh, understand that this is a proven technology. This has been around for a while. Robotics is here to stay. We are evolving. Uh, the next step is going to be future AI technology combined with this to help surgeons uh, ensure proper tracking, proper motion, proper uh, improved outcomes. So that is for sure. Uh, number three, I think it's important uh, for you to know that if you're a candidate for a total knee, then it means that you're a candidate for a robotic knee. 
uh, uh, patients who uh, have been done conventionally in the past, uh, one side and I've done the other side robotically, uh, the majority if not all have been extremely happy with tip number four, which is the benefits of the robot. It's efficient, there's less op opioid use uh, within two weeks and six weeks. Uh, the recovery time, in my uh, experience, has been improved recovery time. Patients are much more active. Uh, I allow my patients typically to drive after about two to four weeks. Uh, healthy patients, tip number five is healthy patients prefer outpatient surgery. They want to go home. If you're healthy, you can go home after this procedure. You can have this done here at the Herndon Operatory. And uh, I'm excited uh, to have this uh, robot here at our facility at Ortho Virginia. So with that, um, I just wanted to thank you all uh, for, for listening to me. I am sure that many of you may have some questions. So uh, Caitlin is here uh, to help us with some Facebook questions. Awesome. Well, first, we have a few special guests, your wife, Mrs. Aguiar, and your daughter, <laughs> Lucia. Say hello. Um, hello. Our first question is do all knee surgeons at Ortho Virginia use the Mako arm or do you need to request this procedure and a surgeon who uses it? Um, many are trained. So um, there's quite a few of us who are trained and certified to use this. There's a process to be certified and um, on our website, you will be able to find those. Uh, also on the Mako Striker website, you may also be able to find those physicians, if not in Virginia or in Maryland, who are registered to and certified to use it. Uh, many patients do come from other states and they'll have it done, they'll stay in a hotel and they'll go back home. And we have a telemedicine capacity and we're able to see these patients a month out, two months out remotely, which uh, helps uh, tremendously. Awesome, our next question. Is latency still a problem? Latency as far as if you wait too long to have the procedure done? Actually, I have not seen that to be an issue. Many patients are uh, have been told that if they wait too long, the, the surgery is going to be that much more difficult. Uh, early this morning here at this operatory, I had a, a patient who was in her late 50s who had a severely deformed knee, where her knee hadn't been hadn't been fully straight in about 10 years, probably about 14 degrees of a contracture, where meaning that she could not bend, uh, extend fully, and she had poor range of motion. And um, the, the robot allowed us to, uh, to give her the motion she was looking for. So I, I don't tell patients that if they wait too long, they're not going to have a successful outcome. Um, there is a small subset of patients, uh, especially for their kneecap, if they have eroded a significant amount of their kneecap, because that tends to be rather thin. That's the only group that I get concerned, and I will tell them, look, you have eroded a significant amount of your bone. But by and large, no. Awesome. So Lori Hansen was one of your patients, and she said she's doing well. I want to make sure you know that. Hi there. Thank you for being here. So can both knees be done at the same time? Uh, good question. Um, I think that only a few patients who are extremely healthy, who are a lot younger, who have a lot of upper body strength, uh, uh, but the most important comment is that they need to be very healthy. Yes, they can be done at the same time, but my preference is typically get an excellent result from one knee and then a few months later or a year later or two years later get the other knee done but if you need them both done at the same time and you're very healthy um, with a lot of upper body strength uh, it's not unreasonable to do all right if you're active in sports what level of, of activity can you expect to see after this type of surgery that's a great question mm -hmm. so the objective is to make sure that this implant, that taking away your pain and improving your function, lasts a long time. And by and large, the majority of us who do knee replacement surgery or partial knee replacement surgery prefer that you avoid high impact activities. Uh, so running and jumping is not a great idea, but I allow my patients to ski, uh, doubles tennis, golf, swim, bike, uh, all these things, uh, exercise obviously, all these things are, are uh, allowed, but running and jumping can lead to fatigue and failure over time. And again, we want that implant to last you a long time. Awesome. Um, so what is artificial technology? <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, uh, a lot of the information that the analytics that we're talking about that uh, is captured by the, the Mako robot is being fed in a database, and we're going to uh, have pre-surgery uh, numbers, uh, and we're going to have intraoperative information that all combine uh, with this database that we can go to, we can see what types of cuts and angles uh, provided the best outcomes from thousands and thousands and thousands of patients' uh, information that had been gathered before. So this uh, artificial intelligence will be able to uh, improve our understanding of, of, of the data that we're looking at, at and outcomes that we're uh, trying to achieve. Awesome. So is robotic surgery available for other joints, like hip or shoulders or fingers? Is this the same robot or different robots? Good question. Um, this particular robot currently uh, can be used for total knees, partial knees, total hips. So I do not perform hip arthroplasty surgery, hip replacement surgery, but this robot can allow a surgeon to do that. Uh, in this facility, uh, I foresee uh, some of our surgeons in the future using it for uh, hip replacement, but currently at, at this time in, in our operatory, it's for partial knees and total knees. Uh, we are working, or at least Stryker is working for this robot to be able to do shoulders in, within the next two years, shoulder replacements, and I would imagine that as this technology evolves, we will be looking at ankles and spine as well. So um, I'm not a spine surgeon, I'm not a foot and ankle surgeon, but I'm excited for its capabilities in the future. Awesome. So is the scar from the Mako procedure the same or smaller? Um, it typically is about the same, um, maybe a little bit smaller. For the partials, it's smaller, but for the toes, it's about the same. Um, you should know that <clears throat> there might be, uh, there is two tiny holes um, uh, the lower part of your shin where we attach pins and an array to give uh, the information to the robot within the operating room. But those are tiny little, little uh, holes that are uh, created for this procedure. So that's the, for, in my hands, that's the only additional uh, scar. Awesome. Um, so we have one question, and if we don't know the answer, we'll get back to you. But can seniors be seen at the Herndon Operatory? So... For, the, for, for our facility to, to be able to be, uh, have this procedure done, you have to be under the age of 65. So um, uh, that's just uh, what, you know, what we're allowed to do in our operatory. Awesome. All right. Um, I'm going to butcher this, so bear with me. Uh, do you guys help with derotational ostomy? Osteotomy. Osteotomy, that one. <laughs> uh, this, this robot does not help you with that, no. Okay. Um, is the recovery time the same with non-MAKO procedure? So, in my, I've been doing knee replacement surgeries for 20 years, so uh, I find my patients are recovering quicker, as I mentioned earlier, and uh, they're driving quicker, they're much more active, um, and they're doing less formal physical therapy, um, by and large. All right. We have a few more questions. Um, is it being done outpatient? Yes, this is an outpatient facility, and so yes, um, patients, as I said, want this procedure, um, they want to be able to go home, and uh, this facility here, the Herman Operatory, uh, we do it many um, uh, knee replacements and hip replacements, and the patients all go home the same day. So if you're healthy, and you're a candidate for a knee replacement or a partial knee, you can definitely go home the same day, and you can definitely have it done with the Maker Robot. All right, two more questions. Uh, when I walk, my knee clicks. What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> well, it can mean a lot of things. A lot of people, I have a few kids, I'm sure, online. I have six kids, and a few of them, they click, and they have no pain. So clicking without pain really means nothing but uh, most of the time. But clicking with pain typically means that there may be some cartilage damage um, and so an assessment of your knee, if you have pain, um, makes a lot of sense. You want to see where along the spectrum you may be, uh, if you have any arthritis, if it's mild or it's non-existent, if it's moderate or it's severe. Cool. Um, so Gloria, looking at your question, um, 
want to clarify the time it takes to do a total knee. Did we say it takes an hour to complete a total knee replacement? Right. So um, I do this under a tourniquet. Uh, typically, it takes anywhere from 50 to 60 minutes uh, for the knee replacement to be almost completely uh, done, except for skin closure, and maybe an, an additional uh, 10 minutes for skin closure. So on average, it's anywhere from 60 to 70 minutes from, from what we call skin to skin, from the start of the case until the last uh, stitch is put uh, put in on to close the uh, wound. And how does that time compare to traditional knee replacement surgery? Well, I I, I wouldn't um, I wouldn't worry so much as a as a patient so much as how speedy your your surgeon is. You, you um, most uh, surgeons who do uh, many uh, knee replacements are anywhere from 50 minutes to an hour and a half, and it depends on the severity and the complexity of the knee. You just want it done well, and um, and so that's typical for most surgeons. In my hands, is about 60 to 70 minutes uh, from skin to skin. All right, your daughter Sophia is saying hi. Hi, Sophia. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so I don't think we have any more questions. Oh, no. Hold on. Uh, nope, I don't think we have any more I, questions. I did want to yeah. let you know one more thing. I think mm -hmm. this is a, a, the last tip I, meant, I forgot to mention before, and I think this is very important. Um, more information to me is valuable. Th this information that this robot allows us to, to know before your surgery, within your surgery, is key. And uh, prior to surgery, as a patient, you already know what your motion is. And you might not have your full extension. You, uh, the therapist may tell you you only have about 110 degrees of motion. We know that going into your surgery. In the operating room, the robot, my assistant, can tell me if I was able to achieve your full extension, if I was able to achieve 125, 130, 140 degrees of flexion. And I document that. You should ask your surgeon, what was my motion in the surgery? You don't have to have it done robotically, but if you do, you, uh, I can tell you with accuracy what your, what your final motion was. This way, when you go to physical therapy, you know what your goal is. If, you're, if I was able to achieve 130 degrees of flexion in the operating room, you and the therapist now have a goal. That's what I want you to achieve. And so it's important that you know that going uh, into physical therapy. Therapy is key before your surgery and after your surgery. But knowing what your knee is capable of doing is going to help you with your goal, which is my goal, to get as much motion and function out of your new knee replacement because we care not only about it being pain free, but you're able to do the activity at the level that you want with as much motion as you want, as, as you can get. So I think that's all. No, nope, uh, we have two today. more questions, oh, sorry. Two more questions. two more questions came in. Um, so how do you assess if someone's a candidate for MAKO? Well, anybody who is a candidate for a knee replacement is a candidate for a MAKO. Uh, understand that if you have moderate to severe arthritis and you have failed conservative treatment, then you are a candidate typically for uh, a MAKO partial or total knee. All right, and a similar question, are there any um, limitations that would make someone not able to have the MAKO? I haven't seen any other than if you have a history of, uh, of infection, I don't think anybody should be operating on your knee unless that infection is eradicated. But uh, if, if you meet the criteria, which is um, severe, moderate to severe arthritis that has failed conservative treatment, uh, I, I see no reason. Now, if you've had prior knee replacement, partial knee, for example, or a total knee, the, the Mako robot currently is not being used for what we call revision surgery. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So that's, that's all our questions. Um, you have a hello from Rob Lagoon, who is your med student, and your surgical schedule, Deborah. You want to say hi to them? I, I do. Thank you, Rob, and, and th thank you, Deb. I, I have a great team. I'm, a, uh, I'm blessed. Uh, uh, Adam from Stryker, Havel from Stryker here, Josie. Thank you, guys. Uh, a shout out to my wife and my six kids. Rosine, I love you, and thank you uh, for supporting me. And thank you all for being here. I, um, I enjoyed doing this. Mm -hmm. I hope it was helpful, and if you are interested or you have more questions, you can go on to our Ortho Virginia blog site to leave a comment or a question, 
we're more than happy to uh, re uh, get back to you and answer any of your questions. So thank you so much, and have a, a safe day, and keep washing those hands. Take care now.